What's up guys, Joe here, welcome back to my channel and today we continue in our chase for the Malia Rosa at the Giro d'Italia and we're just coming off the time trial, go back and check out the past episode if you missed it and we start today with stage 13, it's a flat one but then we have three massive mountain stages in a row. I think we'll conclude today on stage 16. We have the Paso Gavia, the Stelvio as well. Mythical climbs at the Giro. I think this could be the Queen stage. Because following the time trial, we dropped to 6th and 8th in the GC. But we take that for sure. We're still there. We have two cards to play in Anton Sharmik. And really, who I see as our main leader, Tobias Haaland Johansson. He's not the top Norwegian though. We also have Andreas Lettnerson now above us in the GC, definitely looking to bring him back to the team next season. Anyway, I digress because Juan Ayuso, Atia Volta and Tom Dumoulin look to be the riders to beat. And I've mentioned it plenty, but we're still waiting for Tobias to hit that fitness peak. We are so close now and I do believe this could be the final stage and he could hopefully hit that peak ahead of the block of mountains we have coming today, which would be just perfect, wouldn't it? Before that though, we have stage 13 and another chance for the sprinters, Sam Bennett, Tim Malia, those are the guys to beat, but could we get a third stage victory for Chris Halvorsen today? It has to be said though, cool to see Tom Zemulan, big Tom back in pink for his new team, Jumbo Visma, after all those days winning this race in the past, of course. Uh, we have a small breakaway today, but Halvorsen, a plus five, I'm really hopeful for that hat trick. And throughout this race, I have experimented with following other teams, Malia and Philipson. It was very successful earlier on. I do believe that Chris Halvorsen has earned his own train today, even though he can't really follow the wheels at the moment. Come on, Chris. Although it must be said that Sam Bennett train for Bora Hansgrohe is very tempting indeed. But even on this plus five day, beating Bennett in a pure drag race to the line is probably not going to work. So I think Halvorsen, get back to the wheel of your own train. Let's really launch this thing up to 95. Come on, Chris. Get to the wheel of Rasmus Tiller. I think he's just about done that in time but Olav Koy seems to have nixed the wheel of Rasmus Tiller. Get out of the way my man. 3k to go here. This isn't quite ideal with 3k to go. Hulgar pull over. Kron move over and Halvorsen where are you my friends? Where are you? Are we going to have to launch Rasmus Tiller? I think I'm racing for Tiller guys. What a nightmare. Tiller goes for the line. Can we steal a stage victory with Rasmus Tiller? It's a Corundon Circus show. Bennett is going to come third. What a domination by Corundon Circus. Tiller does get fourth and Halvorsen was nowhere. In a stage like that, I guess things happen. We recovered to the top five. Shame for Halvorsen on such a strong day, but Corundon were probably too good, I think. Oh man, I don't believe it. We are literally so close, but Tobias is not going to have his fitness peak to the first mountain stage today. That is a bit of a gutter. He's so close, 99.3 points. He'll have it for stage 15. We need to hope for a good day today and we need it. It's going to be a crucial one. And it's not too bad. It's a plus two for Tobias and Sharma keeps getting these massive days, I think. If I'm not mistaken, he's grown as well. He now has 76 mountain. I'm sure it was 75. I'd love to get some riders in the breakaway if we can get some guys to the front of this race. Maybe Stornomite gets up the road. Maybe one more. Anders, please guys, get up the road today. But yeah, Sharmix plus five. He's developing as the race is going on. He is an undercover guy in this GC. Everyone perhaps looking at Tobias after his performance at the Vuelta. But Sharmik, he is here to compete in this GC. And Andreas Lettnerson, fifth place in the GC, has decided to join the breakaway. He's got 75 mountain. Does he really think he's getting away with that? Oh, and a bad moment for the race, really, because the white jersey and former pink jersey, Atia Volta, has fallen. Oh, no. I'm heartbroken for the guy. I'm heartbroken. Atia Volta, from 10 seconds down in the GC, is out of the Giro d'Italia, and that is an absolute gut-wrencher for the guy. But still, 120k to go. We wait for the genuine breakaway, I believe, to go. We have three riders now. Um, we have Lettnerson, who's been dropped. I'm not sure what he's playing at here, dangling out front of the peloton, but 
Is this really today's breakaway? Finally then, we have our breakaway for the day. 14 riders are here. Filippo Zahn, a good rider for sure. But we have two riders, of course, with GC riders waiting behind. This is crucial for our tactics on the day. These two guys are going to act as satellite riders, I believe, to drop back to either Tobias or Sharmik. And let me tell you for sure, this first climb is not to be underestimated. Averages 8.9%. It is pretty hard at the front of the peloton now as well with EF really trying to up the rhythm. I think they have three riders here in the GC. They have Car, Carthy and Ella Segui all there and cards to play. I would like to try and collect some points with Kron in the KOM competition. We may as well do that right there but Johansson drops over the top. Not ideal. Okay the weirdest thing just happens. Kron crossed the KOM line and stopped. He didn't puncture. He didn't crash. He just stopped. So for some reason, I don't know why he did that. I've got him going again. He's now out of the breakaway. It's not the worst thing in the world. I think he could have probably challenged for the stage today. Uh, but anyway, he's going to drop back earlier than we would have hoped to the Pelson. We only have 60 riders left here though. Uh, so we need him to help out. No, yeah, yeah. This is a massive day in the GC. EF and Jumbo Visma, to be fair, are making this really, really tough. Still, we have 50k to go and riders are dropping left right and center at the moment and to be honest the goal of having the satellite riders was to attack instead it's really more of a defensive tactic and is now back to support his brother we still have Kron in this group as well but we need them back already to be fair we have 37 riders in the main group guys my word EF Nippo are setting up something massive I believe for Hugh Carthy here they continue on the front more riders drop. Stephen Croy's fight with town to the 20s. 25 are here. And Tobias doesn't even have anyone protecting him right now. There it is. There it is. Hugh Carthy on the attack. Rowan Dennis is still here for Jumbo Visma. And for me, that's the crucial thing. If he wasn't here to support the pink jersey, Tom de Moulin, I would perhaps be tempted to follow the attack of Hugh Carthy, but we still have riders here to work. Godou and Carthy on the move though. All right, Kron's gone now. I can also tell you that Pavel Sivakov has been dropped. This stage is absolutely explosive and we need to make sure we're staying to the front of the race. Okay, we'll sit up here. Sharmik and Tobias still here. Kron, grab some water if you want, whatever you want, my friends. But this race is all over the place right now, guys. A long descent to recover then. We only have Jay Vine at the head of the race for Israel starts up. He's giving it a real good go today. Uh, we don't need to work. Of course, we'll set up and recover, waiting for the final effort. And Letnesund as well, of course, well down. So we are going to jump up the GC already, assuming we don't lose big time on the main guys around us. All right, then 10k to go. 10k to go. We still have Rowan Dennis. We still have Sam Omen for the leaders team. We also have Stephen Kreuzweig here. So Tom de Milan has plenty of riders around him. We have two guys to support Tobias and even a second leader as well in Anton Sharmik. So I think we're in a strong position as well. But now this point in the stage is where it gets steep and it gets pretty steep as well. Until the line, it is 6k of probably around 8%, I would guess. And Sharmik is moving towards the front. Kron doing a great final bit of work today. All right, there go EF, there go EF. And I think Carthy is going to be on the move. Andreas Kron with some supreme work today. We only have 3k to go now. Um, and it does look like this is just going to be a flat out drag to the line. No major attacks here on this final ascent. And Tobias is really struggling to hold that wheel of Tobias. But I think Sharmig, you know, he's, he's only 40 seconds behind him in the GC. He has to go for himself. Um, and Tobias can hope to drag himself back later on. Let's go with the Sharmik up to 95. Tobias, like I said, is going to lose more time today. But at the front, it's Juan Ayuso with another unbelievable uh, climbing performance. Tom de Milan comes late though. Ayuso celebrates. It's not close enough. And I think de Milan is just... Going to hold on to that Maglia Rosa. Sharmik finishes well with the second group. And Tobias is going to leak more time. It's not an ideal day. What a rider Juan Ayuso is. He's proving it at the Giro d'Italia. But Tom de Moulin does not give up easily. That is for sure. He is still second. Eight seconds down. We had Sharmik in that group at 22. Tobias 
loses just more than a minute. He wasn't the biggest loser on the day. Lopez lost more. Pavel Sivkov lost plenty of time much further down. He ended up six minutes down on the day and I think Chris Hamilton was even further back. He was at nine minutes. So we do rise to fourth and fifth in the GC. Garrett Thomas up to third place interestingly but Ayuso and Zimalan really have a nice buffer now. And of course a word for Atia Volta. What a shame to see him step out the race I was really looking forward to seeing what he could do here it's happened it's happened it has finally happened Tobias Harlan Johansson has his fitness peak and just in the nick of time so now our entire squad apart from Rasmus Tilla at that physical peak and it really is just in time because the plan de Monte Capioni is going to be a brutal end to today's stage and we have the queen stage to follow as well when I say I think he's the favorite to take pink today for sure considering his recent form but hopefully Tobias has something in his locker. So I'm not entirely sure whether we need representation in the breakaway today. I have put Tiller up the road nonetheless in case the breakaway does go to that final climb. 19k average of 7.7% and we do get a plus 4 with Tobias, a plus 5 with Anton Sharmig. Let's go guys. It's pretty mad how Chris Hamilton just went from a perennial GC contender to a breakaway stage hunter. Anyway, he's in the breakaway today. We have some good climbers here. And like I said, Tiller, he's just a satellite rider in case this breakaway goes somewhere. And honestly, with Ayuso at 17 seconds, I would not be relaying like this, Jumbo Visma. Let the breakaway go, take those bonus seconds and keep the Maliarosa, surely. And so hopefully these guys will allow Rasmus Tiller to roll across the line first in Bergamo. And to be honest, the gap to this breakaway, it's getting quite big. And Filippo Zana, Pernsteiner and Hamilton, they're at about 10 or 11 minutes and they are starting to infiltrate the top 10 and top five on the roads. Yeah, so the gap has just crossed eight and a half minutes and they are provisionally on the podium right now. Filippo Zana, Herman Pernsteiner and Chris Hamilton. Of course, they will be caught a little on that final climb, but I think they'll win the stage and close in on the top 10 today. There you go then, Pernsteiner attacks from the foot of the final climb. I think Rasmus Stella just stay at 68. That should be pretty comfortable and he can drop back later on. And so it begins in the peloton, the Monte Capioni. We have Jumbo Visma still at the front and I'm feeling confident today. Oh, and we have movers, Fortunato trying to move, but Ben O'Connor attacks from the main group. He's some way down still and Ayuso is lurking to the very front. And there he goes, Juan Ayuso trying to follow Peo Bilbao up the road and he is up the road right now. Christophe Laporte is behind maybe... I should try and bridge it to Ayuso with one of our guys. Oh, look at this. Demulan has nothing left, really. Sam Uman now coming to the front. He has nothing. And is it really down to us to chase Wan Ayuso? And do I want to do that even? There are so many questions right now. Ayuso has 1 minute 30 on this group. That is absurd. That is absolutely absurd. Let's try and move up a little with Tobias. We still have helpers here. Let's slow this up. Let's slow this up. Rowan Dennis is still here, to be fair, but we have the strength and depth to really try and push on. And I think Tobias is feeling a little better than Sharmig, so probably worth riding for Tobias as look at the mist. It's two minutes to Ayuso, and Tilla has been passed by him. And so we have four and a half K to go. Kron is gone, and oh look, we have a domestique waiting for us at the head of the race. That is so perfect. Rasmus Tiller, that is beautiful teamwork from you today, my man. Let's go maybe 75. De Moulin still here. And where is Ayuso? He is being reeled in slowly. Such an ambitious move by him. Steven Kreuzweig trying to move De Moulin up and everyone is cracking. David Godou is cracking as well. And Rasmus Tiller is on such great form today. And I think we could probably keep Sharma here as well. Is De Moulin struggling? Is De Moulin now struggling because Rasmus Tiller is absolutely flying up the Monte Capioni at the head of the race. It's a race for the line. Hamilton versus Pernsteiner. We don't have time to look at that because Ayuso has been caught and we have seven riders left in the group. Pronsky, De Moulin, Lopez and Ayuso. And is the one Ayuso over here, guys? Is one Ayuso going to get dropped by Uno X? It's close. 
but I'm not sure he's going to. I think I would say is a fighter, and he's going to fight at this Giro d'Italia. Sharmig as well. Boy, oh boy, look at those guys flying past. The Sharmig finishes right here, but I use so and to Milan are still the cream of the crop in the mountains. Sharmig and Tobias right there today, and what a ride by Rasmus Tiller. But look at that battle between Ayuso and De Mulan. In good news though, we did drop Geraint Thomas completely and we should be on the podium at the end of the day. Benji Narsen likes these tactics by Chris Hamilton. He drops out the GC that he's not going to win and wins a stage the next day in a real big stage as well at the Giro. But De Mulan, Ayuso, they could not be split today and neither could Anton Sharmik. He was right there. Tobias just behind losing a little bit of time, but we are now third and fourth in the GC. Yes, we're three and a half and four minutes down respectively, but we have cars to play and we have options that UAE and Jumbo Visma simply don't have. This is it then guys, the queen stage of the Giro d'Italia. We have the Gavia, we have the Stelvio as well today and that is only the prelude, such an exciting one and we are really going to find out who is the strongest today, I think. When are you so? Is this finally the day he will move into that pink jersey? It seems like it's only a matter of time, to be honest. So the clouds are here. We're in the clouds already. And the stage has literally just begun. We get a plus two and a plus three. Not the best, but certainly not the worst either. And I think our best tactic today is really just to try and stack the breakaway with as many riders as we can. There you go then. We've done it. We've got four riders in the eventual move. Very exciting indeed. I can see Malia here again. Um, he's been in a couple of breakaways at this race already. Tish Benut was here as well. Fortunato Sivakov now joining the breakaway as well. And these all satellite riders for our two leaders. All right, now on the Stelvio and Jumbo Visma seem a lot more interested in making this difficult. Now, I wonder if this is the moment the stage starts to wake up a little bit and we have the riders waiting to support our leaders. We're in a good position here. So right now we have a choice to make. And I think the choice I'm going to make is to be uber aggressive. We have Anton Sharmig, third place in the GC. There's no tempo at the front. We have 86 riders here. I just wonder... I just wonder if he will be allowed off the front and what happens now. Who follows? What the tempo is like behind? We have the cars to play in the GC. I wasn't sure I was going to play one today, but we have Anders Johansson as well. And he is going to drop back and, of course, now support Anton Sharmig. We have Rasmus Tiller protecting Tobias. And this could be a good opportunity, I hope, for Sharmig to really play his card in the GC. But the tempo is absolutely rapid right now. Juan Ayuso has come to the front of the Pelson to protect his second place in the GC. Anders is pulling Sharmig along. He doesn't have the best day today. Uh, let's put him to 75. And Juan Ayuso is doing all of this work. He feels the need to do this at this stage of the race. And that is massive for us. We have 46 riders suddenly in this group. Yep, this was aggressive. I'm not sure it's gonna come off on this occasion, Juan Ayuso has almost made the catch. And I think there it is. He has now made that catch. Sharmik is now struggling a little bit for energy. I think it's probably worth sitting up. Anders can now protect Tobias. And Tobias and Anders are struggling a little bit, you know. Let's sit up and try and make sure they get over the top of the Stelvio. Almost 2,800 metres above sea level we are. Well, we tried on the Stelvio. It didn't quite come off, but we did force Juan Ayuso into doing some work. Sharmik just about gets over in that front group. Tobias struggling. Anders here to support. We have Kron and Stornamite up the road ready to drop back later on at the very front of the race. Though it is still Cepeda, I think, in the virtual pink jersey with Sivakov still there too. Next on the road is Fortunato. After that, we have Zana, Lechnerson, then the group with Stornamite and Kron for us. Benut is there as well. And as we sweep further, up the Stelvio, we head to the 24 rider peloton. So the Val Martello begins and we're still in a similar situation. 27 riders did make it into the peloton and we still have the trio of the strongest riders at the front. Fortunato, Cepeda and Sivakov. And this 
is the moment we have been waiting for. Let's protect Tobias with Anders, Stornemis and Kron ready to drop back as well. They can go at maybe 65, that should be okay. Let's get ready. And on this occasion, it's actually Group Parma. FDJ Prudom is upping the rhythm for David Godu. We can expect him to attack today. And there you have it, up the road, Stornemite and Kron waiting for our guys. Perfect timing yet again with the satellite riders. All right, Matteo Fabro attacks the break still are up the road. Cepeda and Sivkov still duking out for the stage and 12 kids go. We're still waiting for some major action from this GC group. EF very strong with their three uh, mountain goats on the front but now there goes Oyuso. Oyuso comes to the front of the race. We need to make sure we're there. So Pale Will Bow attacks and every time someone attacks it is literally Juan Oyuso who is there looking to respond on the front. Interesting with the Mulan in pink. And he is now isolated without any domestiques. We have four riders here. Oh, and out of nowhere, out of nowhere, Juan Ayuso is on the attack. He, oh my word, what a rider this man is. What a rider. Shall I try and follow with Tobias? I'm tempted to, you know. We're kicking away from the group and we still have Stornamite with us. If we can get to that wheel of Juan Ayuso, which we have done, we can hopefully sit here right now. Stornamite, you're not helpful anymore. We have three kids go. Sharmik is cooked and so is de Mulan. so is Tom de Mulan. Stornamite get out of the way of this gap between the groups there you go and Johannesson on the wheel of Ayuso but look at this man look at this man he is unbelievable he is simply unbelievable and de Mulan has cracked de Mulan has finally cracked at the Giro Cepeda and Sivakov battle for the stage I think that is going to Pavel Sivakov but Juan Ayuso is something else, guys. Johannesson follows Ayuso. We still have lots of riders here. Garrett Thomas is here as well. Ayuso starts to weave a little. He kicks. Tobias tries to follow. He's not going to be able to all the way to the line. A bit disappointing again on the queen stage of the race. But Juan Ayuso is moving into the Malia Rosa. We lose loads of time in that final kilometer. Real shame for me. But Tom de Milan finally has cracked at the Giro and one Uso is in pink. Oh guys, the first big block of mountain stages that are really going to define the Giro are done and Juan Ayuso is the star of the show, is the Juan Ayuso today because he was fourth place, the best of the GC guys again. And he finally has his grasp on the Maglia Rosa. Tom de Mulan, a minute down now in second. We're still third and fourth. Johannesson and Sharmig swap places. We're on the podium, but we are so far away from Ayuso now. Four and a half minutes. Is it too late? And do we have to now think about the podium? It would be a shame. With those cards to play, I definitely want to launch an assault on that pink jersey somehow. We hold the Chiclamino jersey though, that is nothing to be snubbed, that is for sure. Ayuso still in the KOM jersey, white jersey as well, so frustrating. Without this man here, I would believe we could win this race, but he's here. <laughs> I mean, we're leading the team classification though, so that's something right. Movistar. And with that, we have one final episode remaining of our Giro d'Italia. I'll take a quick look at the stages because there's only a few of them. We have a sprint stage to start, but then it is the final mountains. We also have a mountain time trial that is going to be crucial and we will finally know who will win the pink jersey. Will it be Ayuso or can we make a late comeback, guys? I hope you're looking forward to it. Hit like if you enjoyed today. Smash the subscribe button as well if you're new to this channel and I will see you in the next one.